Hi, I'm Tiffany. Today, I'm going to show you how to use fractions, decimals, and percents interchangeably. Using fractions, decimals, and percents interchangeably. For this lesson, I'm going to start each example with just a number. It's going to be either a fraction, a decimal, or a percent. And I'm going to convert that number into the other two versions that it's not. So if it's a fraction, I'm going to convert it to a decimal and into a percent. If it's a decimal, I'll convert it to a fraction and a percent. Or if it's a percent, I'll convert it to a fraction and a decimal. Really, the point of this lesson is to let you know that it does not matter what a number looks like when it's given to you. You can always change the form of that number if it's easier for you to work with while it's in a different form. Let's jump into example number one. Example number one. We have three eighths. This is a fraction. I'm going to turn my fraction into a decimal. To turn a fraction into a decimal, all I need to do is divide the denominator into the numerator. I always told my students to think of it as being sunny and windy. And I always draw my sun on the left side of my fraction. I drew a couple of squiggles to represent wind. And what happens is this top number gets blown over. The bottom number was protected by the fraction bar. So this ends up looking like 8 going into 3. The point of me doing this is so that students don't get mixed up with which number goes inside when dividing and which number goes outside. The top number always goes inside, so the top number always gets blown over to the right. Now it's time to divide. 8 can't go into 3, so you have to add a decimal 0. Always bring my decimal up. Now, 8 can't go into 30. It goes into it 3 times, and that's 24. When you subtract, you get 6. Add another zero to bring down. Eight goes into sixty seven times. And that answer is fifty six. When I subtract, I get four. Add another zero, bring it down. I'm going to extend my line up here. 8 goes into 45 times. So, the decimal form of 3 eighths is 375 thousandths. Now, I also need a, the percent form of this number. So at this point, we have two options. We can either take our fraction to a percent or our decimal to a percent. I think it's easier to take the decimal to a percent. To go from a decimal to a percent, all you do is move your decimal space over two spaces to the right. So we start with something that looks like this. Three hundred seventy-five thousandths. equals thirty seven and five tenths percent so all I did was move my decimal over two spaces and added my percent sign so if I needed to use these numbers interchangeably let's say I had a problem where a decimal was more useful, I could take my fraction and turn it into a decimal. Or I have a problem where having my number as a percent would be more useful. I could change my fraction into a percent. It may be a two-step process. You may have to take that fraction into a decimal and then to a percent, and that's fine. Really, you're just doing what you need to to put everything in a form that is best for you. So, the numbers 3 eighths.
three hundred seventy five thousandths and thirty seven and five tenths percent are all equal to each other. So anytime you're given a problem, you are free to convert the number to any form that you need to to make it easier for you to work with. Let's move on to example number two. Example number two, I have one and two fifths. I'm gonna convert that to a decimal. To begin with, I have a whole number of one. So that whole number is just gonna come out in the beginning. I only need to convert the fraction portion to a decimal and then the whole number will just be added to the fraction portion. So it'll be one and then there'll be a decimal and then whatever I got as the decimal version of this. Remember, if it's sunny and windy on my left, the top number gets blown over to the right. So I have five and it goes into two. Five cannot go into two, so I have to add a decimal zero. Bring my decimal up. Five goes into 20 four times. And it is 20. I subtract and I get zero. So I'm done. So the four tenths is the decimal form of my two fifths. So I'm going to add that to the whole number of one. So as of now, I have my fraction form of the number and I have my decimal form of the number. Now I need to get my percent form of the number. I'm going to start by writing my number. And I'm starting with the decimal form of it. I'm going to move my decimal over two spaces to the right. I have to add a zero because there's an extra space here. And I end with 140 percent so my three forms of this number are one and two fifths which is equal to one and four tenths and that's equal to one hundred forty percent Let's move on to example number three. For example number three, we start with an improper fraction. That's no problem. We can still use all of the same steps. Remember, it's sunny and windy. The top number gets blown over. So we have a 10, and it goes into our 17. 10 can go into 17, so I don't need to add a decimal zero. It goes in one time, and it's 10. When I subtract, I get 7. Now, because I've subtracted and I didn't end up with a zero, I know that I need to add a decimal zero so I have something to bring down. As soon as I write my decimal zero, I like to bring my decimal up immediately so I don't forget to add it later. Now I can bring down my zero. 10 goes into 70 seven times, and it is 70. When I subtract, I get zero. That's a good sign that I solved correctly. If I end with a zero and there's nothing else to bring down, that's a good sign that I probably solved my answer correctly. So right now we have our fraction form of the number, our decimal form, and now we need to get our percent form. Remember, to get our percent form, all we do is move our decimal space over two places to the right. So I write my number down, one and seven tenths, and now let's move our decimal over two spaces to the right. Add a zero because there's an empty space there. And that equals 170%. So I have 17 tenths. That equals 1 and 7 tenths. Which also equals... 170 percent and I do want to point out something please don't think that the 17 tenths is only equal to the one 
and 7 tenths because they're touching each other. The 17 tenths also equals the 170 percent. All three of these are equal in value. It doesn't matter really where they're positioned. This is sort of like saying, this is one dollar, this is four quarters, and this is ten dimes. Let's move on to example number four. I have 72 hundredths. So this time we're starting with the decimal. Is that a problem? Definitely not. All I need to do is move my decimal over two spaces to the right to get a percent. One, two. So that equals 72 percent. How do I get a fraction out of this? Remember when you say the name of a decimal in the correct way, you always say the name of the place of the very last digit. So this is 72 hundredths, meaning the two is in the hundredths place. So 100 is the denominator that I would give this number. So you write the number down without the decimal and you give it a denominator of 100. This is the fraction form. The only problem with this fraction is it's not simplified. So I'm going to simplify. To simplify, I'm going to divide the numerator and the denominator by 2. And after doing that, I get 36 over 50. 36 and 50 are both even numbers, so that means I can simplify this fraction again. If I had originally divided by the greatest common factor to simplify here, then I would have only had to simplify one time. But because there was a number that was larger than 2 that could have gone into the 72 and the 100, it makes me have to simplify more than one time. So, because they're even, I'm going to divide by 2 again and I get 18 over 25. This cannot be simplified anymore. There's no number that goes into both 18 and 25. So the three forms of my number are 72 hundredths, 72 percent, and 18 over 25. Let's move on to example number five. I have 8 and 1 tenth. I'm going to change this into a percent first. I move my decimal over two spaces to the right, add a zero, and a percent sign. That looks like 810 percent. I need to make this into a fraction. Remember, the way you say your decimal gives you a hint at what your fraction is going to look like. I'll go ahead and tell you something. Because we have a whole number of 8, this fraction is just going to have a whole number from the beginning. So it's going to have a, it's going to be a mixed number. It's going to have a whole number of 8, and then you're going to have your fraction portion. This is 1 tenth. So tenth is the position it's in, and that tells you what your denominator is going to be. It's going to be a tenth, which it means 10. 1 and 10. This cannot be simplified. So the three different forms of my number are 8 and 1 tenth, 810 percent, and 8 and 1 tenth. Let's move on to example number 6. Example number 6, 92 percent. If going from a decimal to a percent requires you to remove the decimal two spaces to the right, you may realize that the opposite is going to be true to take a percent to a decimal, and it is. You take your decimal and you move it two spaces to the left. The decimal form of 92% is 92 hundredths. To go from my decimal to a fraction, I need to remember how I properly say that decimal. 92 hundredths ends with the word hundredths, so that gives you a hint right there. Hundredths mean make your denominator a 100. 92 will be your numerator, and this can simplify. 
I can divide the numerator and the denominator by 4. When I do that, I get twenty three over twenty five so my three numbers are ninety two percent ninety two hundredths and twenty three over twenty five let's move on to example number seven i have one hundred fifteen percent i take my decimal and move over two spaces to the left this time it ends between two numbers the two ones So that means 1 and 15 hundredths is my decimal form of 115%. To make this into a fraction, I remember I have a whole number, so my fraction is going to be a 1 and something. And we have 15 hundredths, so that means 15 over 100. That can simplify. I'm only going to simplify the fraction portion. The whole number just remains the same. I'm dividing both the numerator and the denominator by 5. 15 divided by 5 is 3, and 100 divided by 5 is 20. So, 115%, 1 in 15 hundredths, and 1 in 3 twentieths are all the same value, and they are my answer for example number 7. Let's move on to example number eight. Example number eight, they want us to write a less than, greater than, or equal to sign. We have a little different situation here. We have two numbers, they are 22% and 75 hundredths. What I need to do is put them in the same form, either both in fractions, both in decimals, or both in percent. Once I do that, I'll be able to compare the numbers more easily and decide if one number is way larger or if they're equal. I think I'm going to change my 75 hundredths into a percent. To do that, I'm going to move my decimal two spaces to the right. Add my percent sign, and this ends up being 75%. So I can tell really quickly now, because they're in the same form, that 75% is larger than 22%. That's my last example. Thanks for watching. If you liked this video, don't forget to click like, then head over to supereasymath.com for more math tutorials, printable video notes, worksheets, and more.